Welcome to this Frequency Matters podcast. I'm Pat Hindel, and today I'm talking with Dr. Rajiv Gopal, Vice President of Advanced Programs at Hughes. Welcome, Rajiv. Oh, thank you, Patrick. It's indeed my pleasure to be here on this podcast. So the uh, satellite market has gotten a lot of attention in the last few years, especially with the emergence of the new space market in commercial areas. But um, military applications are still very important and critical to shaping the industry, how systems are kind of designed and deployed. You know, what is the military's current path toward adopting mature LEO, GEO, and 5G systems? No, this is a great question. As a country, we have always seen that this is the whole of the nation which defends the country, protects the country. And especially if you look into comms or satellite communications, uh, last couple of decades, commercial sector has made tremendous progress on a variety of areas. So, of course, as a company, we pioneered some of the high-throughput satellites, HDS satellites, Jupiter 1, Jupiter 2, with hundreds of gigabits capacity. And lately, we have seen LEO systems. So a lot of people have heard more on the Starlink side. There is also OneWeb, and OneWeb has launched their constellation. And Hughes provides the ground segment for uh, OneWeb uh, LEO constellation. So we, of course, know a lot more about uh, how a LEO architecture works, how it provides certain benefits with respect to performance, low latency, and the global coverage. The best part of commercial is that when you look at geos and leos, they complement each other. So high throughput satellites, they have very good capacity density. They do a great job with respect to video, web, over a continent, a country. And leo, of course, they have low latency So and they have great architecture for global coverage. So DOD is noticing this. So they have come up with the new kinds of programs, OTAs, other transaction authority, DOD leadership in every forum been to in past few years, they have highlighted all the investments which have been made by the commercial sector, and more importantly, how these solutions, technologies, terminals, they're actively being used. Everyone knows what happened in Europe with respect to the war which started last year and how commercial played a big role. But that's just one data point. If you look at how people are thinking about modernizing uh, DOD SATCOM, commercial is a big piece of that architecture. And there is an office in Space Force called Commercial uh, Communications Office, Cisco. And there, the focus is to look into both managed service and also technologies, commercial side, how they can complement and support uh, DOD applications. And so how is this affecting the architecture of satellite systems and how does 5G play into these? Again, great question. 5G is very relevant. We all use cell phones, have been using it for decades. If you look at historically, we started with analog, uh, cellular, and then went to 2G and 3G and 4G and now finally 5G. So there were two different worlds. There was like satellite communications and cellular communications. For the first time, 5G under the standardizing body 3GPP, it has brought these two areas together. So there is a concept called NTN, non-terrestrial networking. And it's a key part of how 5G and 5G plus, they will be getting standardized so that satellites could emerge as a first class citizen uh, with respect to cellular technology. So historically, people would provide satellite backhaul and so on, which was after the fact a sort of addition. But 5G for the first time with NTN brings both these worlds together. So satellites are almost like very tall tower. So instead of a 50 meter tower or 50 foot or 100 foot tower, you have a LEO satellite 500 miles in the sky. So the benefits are that you have now good coverage. So this really complements the the wide use of cellular phones and billions of devices, and now with full coverage. So we, EchoStar, which is our parent company in Hughes, we have announced our own S-band system where we'll use 5G technology so that we can reach direct-to-cell or direct-to-mobile device connectivity using satellites. So this is going to be the most dynamic area you can think of from comps perspective because it's not just high data rates close to cities or suburbia, 
but anywhere you go you go to a national park or or you go to a far away continent or northern pole and and you have this connectivity so this is really an amazing way in which uh, we expand coverage because capacity is well known and of course uh, those who are close to fiber they get lot of capacity but fiber cannot provide coverage worldwide so this is the combination of ntn and cellular and satcom which is not truly changing how comms helps all walks of life i mean national defense agriculture education health every sector is encouraged enabled by by comms and so how has commercial space demonstrated key software based technologies so software is again is probably the most potent technology which is fueling acceleration improvements in every walk of life and we have seen how people use software on pc simple things like spreadsheets and word processing then they got interconnected with internet and that brought new applications such as social networking and entertainment netflix and of course retail amazon type business so today what is happening is that software is now revolutionizing networking itself instead of buying expensive boxes and proprietary boxes people can use commodity networking devices and then the software brings the best out of that hardware by orchestrating how the traffic is routed how the traffic is prioritized how the traffic takes a, a leo satellite if it's a low latency application and it can benefit from the cost effectiveness of geo satellite because video runs very well on geo satellites so all that magic is now implemented with software so commercial industry has done well i mean hughes we have a product which implements the software divine network and this is becoming very important for government so there's a term called resiliency so the idea is that if you have diverse transports you have couple of leos couple of geos and there's a smart software which can take traffic and can distribute across these transports automatically then you benefit from the cost effectiveness of these services without getting vendor lock because that is very important to dod dod cannot depend on just one company but once you have this kind of software through software defined networking we can leverage diversity and redundancy in multiple transports so that we can uh, provide some of the cost advantages but more importantly the high availability or resiliency with these software defined networks so building on that resiliency fact you know what ways can automation and orchestration through emc and sne inject the resiliency into legacy systems maybe you can define emc and sne too yes so yeah so let me start with that so i definitely talked about how multiple transports or satcom paths they could be used on the edge so there are two things which need to happen so edge is where uh, you have the field the tactical deployment far away from urban centers and there you have a software a smart network edge and a smart network edge knows about all the satellites all the services 5g which is available to that terminal and based on what is happening with respect to traffic traffic type whether a hardware is working or not working whether the adversities aligned with the things like anti jamming or interference they are getting encountered so all these problems could be detected and action can be taken by the smart network edge so that the right transport could be selected based on price availability robustness and the traffic can continue to be propagated now on the other side we have a centralized policy point so we call it emc and that's a term which comes from us dod enterprise monitoring and control so the idea is that it's like a network management system so that centralized emc and again it's logically centralized it knows about all the service providers the satellites the regions the types of services which are available so it can process all that and come up with crisp policies and configuration for terminals so emc can process all this global data distill the information and provide that information automatically to the edge 
to a terminal. And there could be many such terminals. And then the terminal can use this set of policies and automatically decide what to do. So this way, we have the best of a centralized global optimization, which is possible once you have all the data. And at the same time, because these policies are like files, which have been provided to the terminal, and then the terminal doesn't have to be connected to this EMC because it has that local data policies relevant for that terminal. And it can use those policies to make the decisions on a second by second basis, which satellite to use, which terminal to use, based on if it is getting jammed or if there is a traffic problem or there's congestion or whatever the adversity might be, the local smart network edge software, it can make the right autonomous uh, decision. Well, that's very interesting. I hadn't known that it was getting that far, uh, being that sophisticated. So uh, how about looking forward to the future? You've talked about some current technologies, you know, software-based systems, NTN. You know, how do you see the future evolving with these technologies and what new technologies do you expect? Uh, Right. And again, uh, we are living in very interesting times. Things are changing rapidly and uh, we see it all around us. And if you parse this whole environment a little bit more, uh, you would realize that software definitely is the manifestation of these advancements. But there is a new set of technologies, AI ML, artificial intelligence machine learning. And especially in past few months, we have seen apps like chat GPT, the, the generalized models, the large language models. So they basically use neural networks and they have this whole set of information which is available on the internet, billions of pages of all sorts of data, uh, Wikipedia and web pages and all sorts of books. So they have basically used that data and trained the models. So the models have become very smart. And we see their smartness with respect to writing a story or writing a little poem. But they are also being used now to automate a process, to write programs to optimize a network. And we ourselves on Hugh's side for a number of years, we have been using these AI and machine learning models to improve our networks, to make them more efficient, more effective. Now we would see this turbocharged because now this technology is available to everyone. So we would see a lot of innovative groups within a company, a lot of startups, which would use these AI ML techniques and they would make our networks even more nimble, more resilient, more efficient, so that ultimately the end user, the end customer, they can benefit from the best utilization of existing resources. So as I said earlier, that software makes hardware smart. It can leverage, it can reuse or reuse the hardware multiple times. So we would see that more effectively because there'll be more advanced intelligent techniques which would be available to automate and and make improvements, make continuous improvements in every walk of life, including networking and computing and cloud and 3GPP. So we talked about 5G. The biggest difference between 5G and 6G, which people have now started designing, would be intelligence. So a lot of AI ML will be used to make the right decision in radio access network, in the core network, in slicing, and all that will be done a lot more automatically with AI ML. Well, Rajiv, very interesting conversation. You know, thank you so much for talking with me today about the trends in technology in satellite systems. For our listeners, you can find more podcasts at podcast.microwavejournal.com. Thanks for listening.